thank you for coming. Aloha. And we're so excited to be here. Um, I'm Sean Larson from the Seattle Aquarium. I'm a researcher there. Um, I'd like to introduce my um, colleagues from the Seattle Aquarium. If you guys would come up here, please. All right, so up here first we have Andy Sim. He's a uh, warm water biologist at the Seattle Aquarium. And Jeff Christensen, he's our dive safety officer at the Seattle yeah. Aquarium. Yeah. There you go. Now we're on so, front of the camera. And then um, Brian McNeil, who um, kind of does double duty in the warm water section of the Seattle Aquarium as well as working in the cold water section. And it's really important to have at least a couple people that really know the fish um, from Hawaii very well, and you'll see that a little bit later in the presentation, because basically while we're underwater, we're identifying the fish and calling it onto our camera. So it's important to have guys like these. It's important to have somebody like Jeff and myself that know how to run the camera, and then Jeff is our safety officer to make sure we don't die while we're out there. Do everything the right way, and we, we always do a really good job. So these guys are great. Thank you. Okay, so here we go. So um, as George said, um, we've been doing research here um, in Puliko and other places in Hawaii for about five years now. And we just wanted to tell you a little bit about our program and give you some preliminary results. We are do not have, um, we have not run every statistical analysis of every fish or every reef, so we're just, uh, I can just give you a preliminary um, result. Oh, what do you want? So, um, as I said, we've been conducting annual reef surveys here at seven sites along the northwest coast of Hawaii, comparing protected to non-protected areas. And I don't know if any of you guys are up to the Hawaii um, protected area versus non-protected coast, but they're very complex. And basically, when we say protected coast, um, protected areas means that there's no aquarium collecting allowed. And there's, um, there's some limitations to fishing, but it's not a complete closure to all fishing. And when we ask our partners um, at the Department of Aquatic Resources, it's just very complex. Um, the non-protected areas is open to all fishing and aquarium collecting, so that's the difference there. Partners are um, primarily Bill Walsh at the Department of Aquatic Resources here in um, Hawaii and Washington State University, um, Brian Tissot. Our primary partners. And um, why are we doing this? We want to compare differences in fish diversity and abundance between areas with different fishing regulations, the protected versus the semi-protected areas. And also we want to compare changes in fish number or diversity um, or fish, the number of fish species and the abundance over time to document a phenomenon called shifting baselines. And I'm sure I've talked to many of the people on the ground here and, and the people that have been here a long time say, you should have been here 20 years ago. And I say, well, do you have a picture? And so if we don't document what was here 20 years ago, we don't know how different it is to what is here today. And that's what we're trying to do by taking pictures and creating an archive that's public that anyone that wants to can look at our, our research transects and see how many fish there were five years ago and hopefully ten years ago. Um, and also look at coral cover. Um, researchers can use that information now and in the future to determine differences. So here's just a, an example of shipping baselines, which are changing reference points used to describe significant differences. So you see here a lot of fish, but just a couple species. And then here's the same reef you have different species, different numbers of species, and so this is a shift. And if this, uh, this occurred um, over time, we would be able to pick that up through our documentation. So why us? Well, for 30 years, the Seattle Aquarium has exhibited animals from Hawaii in our Pacific Coral Reef Gallery to inspire and educate the public about Hawaii's coral reefs and the unique animals that live there. We also conduct research in-house on coral growth and reproduction. So we've, um, we've been very interested in the animals of Hawaii and we wanted to do some conservation research to give back to the community. 
So in 2009, the aquarium began conducting um, the reef surveys in Hawaii annually. And we feel that this uh, conservation role contributes to the body of knowledge about the fish diversity and abundance in these areas, um, and also would hopefully contribute to the long-term conservation of these reefs. So a little bit about our methods. Our goal is repeatable annual counts in the same locations to measure significant changes over time and between sites. And so the, what you see here, and we have our little research sign, it's just a little triangle to note the center of our um, transect. And we put nothing on the bottom permanently. We just loop um, a piece of string through a rock hole and um, leave it there just the amount of time that we are doing our survey. And let's see, I don't know if I'm ready for prompts yet, but um, an underwater video trans. So then we have a survey site that we can get to time and time again, year after year after year. And then we use underwater video to take pictures of the fish. So we don't have to call all the fish while we're swimming that day, because believe me, you'll see some of the video, there are a lot of fish. And it'd be very hard for divers to be able to, with a slate, you know, write down all the fish they're seeing. You can do that if you're focusing on one or two species, but we're trying to look at all the species there. So we're taking pictures, and then at our leisure, we can bring back to the aquarium and count in slow motion. We can freeze a frame, and then also we have a um, archived uh, record that anybody can have access to. We look at seven sites along the west coast of Hawaii, centered in Puaco, and again in both marine protected areas, which are Puaco and Okona Airport, and then also the non-protected area, which is Mahukona. And so this is a little diagram of, of what we do here, and you can see there are two divers. One has a research camera, one has a tape transect, and we start in the middle where the um, sign there is, and we go 50 meters in one direction, stop, turn around, come back, and we're also taking a video on our reverse transect, and there's the transect tape in it. And this is kind of interesting because then you can um, see if the, there's changes in the fish density or diversity and abundance based on the divers and the gear that we're using. And so we, we count the number of fish in the forward transect and in the reverse. And usually there are more fish to be counted in the forward transect. And some of the fish are pushed out of the way, or they'll be scared of the gear or whatever. And then some fish are actually attracted to it, not very many. Um, and then we go back to the center, and then we go another 50 meters in the opposite direction and come back. So a complete transect is 100 meters. And we have, um, Jeff has some cards here. So when I said we don't leave anything on the bottom, how do we find these sites year after year? Well, we have uh, GPS coordinates, which help us out, but we also take pictures of unique formations that are underwater. So there might be um, three um, rocks without any coral on them in a, in a formation. We'll take a picture of that. And we'll go, okay, yeah, that's where we start. We remember this, and then we'll, we'll have the snorkelers set our dive flag there, and then we'll go down and put our um, site marker and start our surveys. Um, another part of our methodology is we have the camera, as you know, to document, but we have we have these full face masks, and Andy has one here, so that we can talk to the camera because there's so many fish that we're seeing. So you can put it on, Andy. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Since you were wearing it all day. All right. But um, so it goes over his whole face, and there's a microphone in there, and then he's able. The this is our right here on the side. It's that little red disc. You right. guys can come up and take a look at this after the presentation if you'd like a closer look. We don't pass the masks around because they never come back. <laughs> and then that's our receiver. And so that can receive um, audio from, from other divers and from the diver itself. And then our camera actually has another audio receiver on top of it. And so when the divers are talking, um, the camera will pick up the um, audio just from, it, just from the microphone on the camera inside our house. 